Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today with episode 172 of the Ham Radio Podcast. And it's me, Carrick, with ACG. No guest this week. Carrick, how are you doing, my friend? Absolutely excellent. What about you? I'm doing well. We want to thank you guys so much for your positivity, your support. These last couple of weeks, we've had some amazing guests between Spawn Wave and Yang Ya, and a yeah. big reason these people come on is because they see the positive community that we're able to cultivate here. So I just want to thank you guys so much for being supportive, heading over to their channels, showing them some love and all that stuff, as well as constantly supporting the show here on a weekly basis. Um, as always, you can flick a buck. Flick a buck. Yes, sir. And uh, you can go to the link in the description down below, patreon.com slash plays, or you can go to Carrick's Patreon. Uh, on my Patreon, you get early access to the podcast, Patreon-exclusive videos. I actually did a overcooked playthrough with my girlfriend for this yeah, week's I saw Patreon. That. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> that was fun as shit. Um, so you can get that. Uh, personal podcast, ton of other stuff there. Carrick, you doing anything fun on your Patreon that you'd like to pimp? Um, this month, actually, strangely enough, I got two YouTubers who are gonna who are signed up for the support level you and I do. Cool. Which is like, you know, come on and uh, I'll help you with the shit no one helped us. Well, yeah. Luckily enough, you and I now, after mm -hmm. each podcast, are like, okay, let me help you with this. Blah, blah, blah. Um, that's actually, I'm really excited for that. Strangely enough, that's the most exciting thing. I don't know why, but I get the most excited about that. Like I agree. When, when somebody's like, hey, I need some help and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yes, because it's I, it's not even just being like hypothetically like being, you know, selfless or something. It's more along the lines of just understanding I wasn't the only dumbass out there. Mm -hmm. Like, it's nice to know that the data wasn't out there and I just missed it. Instead, a lot of the data is not out there. A lot of the help people need is not out there. Yeah, man, I, I've done it myself too. It, it, it feels good. You know, it feels good yeah. like watching them grow and, and seeing them make strides. One of the guys that I helped, uh, he's getting married now, so he had to drop off the Patreon, but he, um, he started off when we were talking at like 150 and I started helping him with some of his titles, some of his thumbnails, and now he's at like 1,500 subscribers so oh, you know cool. you know so it was a pretty significant leap and that was in a couple of months so uh really cool stuff um <clears throat> as for upcoming content for myself uh ac odyssey review currently underway i did a live stream i'm going to stream it one more time um oh, before well. it launches yeah yeah um definitely working hard on that one next week i'm traveling for a fallout 76 event i'm finally allowed to confirm that you've heard me on the podcast if you listen consistently i've said multiple times like yeah big event coming up big event coming up this is what I've been talking about, so I'm going to get hands-on with that game. Um, I'm also going to be guesting on Spawn Waves podcast this weekend of the 28th of September. So if you'd like to hear me blabber a little extra this time around, it's going to be at around 9, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time on Spawn Waves channel. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, what about you, Carrick? What are you up to on the channel? Just uh, Odyssey, helping those people out. And then um, I, I've forgotten to contact Spawn about mm. getting onto theirs. But um, we're looking for some more developers that are supposed to come on to tw uh, the Twitch that we do every single Friday, like this podcast. The problem is, is right now Discord's been acting up. So there, that's a little tentative on when we'll do it. But right. um, hopefully getting some more uh, developers on. Cool, cool. And I, I want to give... You know, a, a lot of props and love to Carrick. You know, everyone loves your reviews, man. But I don't think a lot of people realize that what t it takes to do your content. You know, for for some people on the outside looking okay. in, they may they may see like a review go up and they're like, okay, it's another video from Carrick. But for you, you know, that's like you look at Forza Horizon and then we're talking AC Odyssey. Like we're talking hundreds of hours into what ends up being two videos. And yeah. I think you know, I just wanted to send some love your way, man. And Thank just you. Just let you know that what it. you're doing is incredible. That just that's an insane it. amount of work for uh, what turns into very quality content. Too. What you turns know? into two like 12 minute videos, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like 300 hours of gameplay or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, no problem, man. Anyway, let's start off this week's news with the Fallout 76 beta details. We finally got them. It's about time. It's the end of September. And the beta was apparently starting in October. Now we know when. So it's hitting Xbox first on October 23rd, which is the Great War date in the Fallout universe. So uh, for those who have covered and followed Fallout for a long while, I, I was really happy to see this because they have had so many chances to do something with the Great War date. I'm glad that the beta is going to start on that day. But it's for Xbox only. If you're on PS4 or PC, it's on October 30th. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Along with this was a couple of other interesting tidbits I wanted to note. Number one, Carrick will be thrilled about this, is that Adam's currency was revealed. It's going to be earned through in-game challenges, achievements, and you can even purchase in-game cosmetics with it. Uh, you can also buy these Adams with real money too. So uh, we'll get into this in a little bit, but to get the brain stirring on the discussion we're having, uh, for those listening out there, consider this. We have caps, we have Adams currency, and we have the chance of having Creation Club credit. So that's three currencies that will be bouncing around Fallout 76 potentially. Uh, next is that the beta is a 45 gigabyte download. You cannot preload it and progress will carry over at the end of said beta. PC players, however, once they download the beta, they don't have to download the game again. And the beta, interestingly enough, I like this part. Granted, it's starting late, but it's also ending late. It's going to go up until a few days before launch. So in many ways, it's going to feel like, for folks, the game is launching October 23rd, if it's going on for that long. The only difference is that you can play um, for a set amount of time frames right. like they, they said sometimes four to eight hours is their range so uh you pretty much have to schedule time before launch to get into fallout 76 but i mean with progress carrying over you got to wonder where bethesda stops us you know they did say it's going to be the full game so is the full story there i mean can people beat fallout 76 in, during the beta i mean it's it's out for long enough there are going to be people grinding it um, yeah. I, I also wonder yeah. now that I got my wheels spinning here, I got to wonder if that's why they're also limiting some of the play time. Um, cause I know they said the main story, according to game informers, right up, you can't blaze through it. But anyway, yeah. that's all the information we got on the beta that I wanted, that I wanted to highlight. Uh, this comes from a Bethesda net post, uh, Carrick, I made a, a 16 minute video on this. So I, I want to hear your thoughts first. What, what are you feeling about this Fallout 76, uh, demo? <laughs> Well, the de so the, I, I don't like paid for demos at all because mm -hmm. that's what that is, is a demo. Obviously. Yes, I should have highlighted that. You got a pre-order. Yeah, I got a pre-order, which absolutely sucks. I, the one thing that sort of got me was I didn't even realize it until you just broke down the currencies. That's actually more bothersome to me as somebody who plays a lot of different games, especially like an MMO. When you have multiple currencies, there's always that ability for the company to fuck you over in some way mm -hmm. and be like, hey, man, buy this for a dollar which gives you a thousand diamonds and you're like that's awesome and then you find out everything costs ten thousand diamonds and once you start working out the money amounts you're like jesus everything's super expensive right. so it's like I, I i i don't feel the need that in that game there was any need to have that many currencies and so that actually is just one more sense of confusion for me is what exactly are they offering and what exactly are they expecting from a consumer like if you play and i play mm -hmm. It, what can I, when can I get something that you paid for? Like, how long does that take? The grind of those kind of things yes, is going to be a big deal. Yes, number one question for sure. Yeah. Because we, we saw an example of, of a challenging game. I highlighted it in my video was um, the, the player character had reached level four and they earned a, a perk card pack. So there's yeah. different in-game rewards. But anyway, you, you were about to say something. I cut you off. No, no, that actually goes to what I was saying was like what what things there are also going to end up, you know, affecting the game right. as well. And a perk pack certainly sounds like it will. Yeah, I mean, what, what I'm what I'm nervous about is I feel like out the gate, you know, first 20 hours with this game, I, I feel like it's going to be great. You know, that they're going to roll in, the, the challenges are going to roll in. Oh, I got so many atoms. I'm good to go it's with these types of games that have such a long lifespan and obviously the core of that um is the free dlc to keep the player base engaged right. and the trade-off there is there has to be microtransactions that you know companies aren't just going to keep pulling out of pocket and and dumping money on the table i i'd imagine for free dlc i they they'd expect some type of payment or some way to supplement that um but it's just like i i I feel like initially it's going to be great. You know, we're going to have the atoms we need. We're going to get what we want. And, right. and then, like, as the life of this game goes on, that's where I get concerned. Things a stretch out. Yeah, because a lot of people were, were hitting up my Twitter when I was like, oh, no, Fallout's got another currency. People thought somehow I didn't know about the other uh, cur or, uh, microtransactions in the game. I was like, this is we've known microtransactions are going to be in yeah. Fallout. We knew they were going to be cosmetic. That's not my issue because I've always said this. They're the least of all evils. You know, if I'm going to take any, yeah, sure, toss cosmetics my way, that's fine. And as long as I can directly purchase them, they're not tucked into a box that I'm randomly generating, totally fine. 
you know, it's just that I'm sure everyone sympathizes with the idea of we're Fallout fans. We love this franchise. And it's like, oh, no, it's you're seeing something that kind of classifies with games that you, you don't really vibe with being put into Fallout. And that's why I was like, oh, fuck, man, like there, it's really happening. It, it was yeah. it felt off. But um, on the other hand, because I was like, oh, man, you know, I, I kind of wish it all melded together with caps. Like I thought, you know, just they'd have really super high priced cosmetic items for caps. They kind of keep it all in the in-game world, not some online store. Um, so I, I get why there's got to be multiple currencies in a way, unless you got a different idea, because you, you kind of want to separate like, OK, this is the online store. This is the in-game store. If there's like a, a, a glitch or an ability to get tons of caps, then suddenly that store isn't as valuable right so mm -hmm. i mean it, it, it's like a it's a balance right give and take to some extent yeah i mean it, it, one of the things i don't like and we've seen it with gta too was, was just like once they get a certain group of people online they just sort of grief them for every fucking or grift them for every cent they can get and i That's am nervous true. that they're just going to front load it because front loading is real. I mean, now, especially when you start talking to devs, they'll start admitting that, yeah, you know, we front load it for Twitch, let's say, because a lot of people who play Twitch only play for the first five or six hours. So we're going to front load those five or six hours and then the game sort of goes into its normal status. And mm -hmm. what I'm worried about is that uh, Fallout 76 will be just that, that you'll st that like you'll get in there for the demo. Everything will appear one way. And then as you start getting higher and higher, Things just start stretching out. They just take longer and longer, which is in a weird way, sort of the opposite of what you'd expect if you leveled up, yeah. right? If you level up, you're like, well, I'm going to do things faster. In fact, we've talked about a game off camera that's in in a way sort of like this, where you're like, Correct. there's a weird there's a weird extension here that I'm not quite thinking is bad, but it, it feels odd. That is very much where I think, or at least worry, uh, Fallout 76 is going to go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think you hit on something there because this game is going to live and die by the community, especially it's getting double dated on by Red Dead launch day for the beta and then launch day for Red Dead Online roughly around the the same time um, where it's going to need those streamers. And it makes you wonder what those small time periods, let's say day one of the beta, um, you know, that's just right around Red Dead and mm -hmm. um like the first four hours of the game are available you know they're just going to keep it a short period of time let's say bethesda game studios is looking at it, they're like look our first few hours amazing like we got tons of new content the player's going to feel overwhelmed with options there's going to be loot there's going to be all this new lore and intriguing story and boom we got this four hour cutoff time which you know will keep people coming back for more coming back for more yeah i mean because like the way i'm looking at it now is okay let's say it goes up until November 11th game comes out the 14th like I, I I'm just looking at it like Fallout 76 launches on October 23rd <laughs> you know that's the way I'm looking at it the only difference I guess is you can't get trophies and achievements during the beta so you can play the shit right. out of the game you're just not going to get rewarded in that sense um what do you think about the beta download size and that it can't be preloaded uh that not preloaded I I I I don't really care because I have a fast download speed, but I sort of understand if somebody doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I'm not really bothered too much by any of the beta news. Uh, other than you have to buy it, I don't like. I don't. I, I don't like that you have to pre-order to get into it. Right. Right. But that's yeah. just that's the big thing. That no, I, I get take that. Away from it. And I especially imagine it, it probably grinded your gears when, um, you know, I'm reading this forum post and the the way it was worded, it, it felt. It gave off this feeling like Fallout 76 was coming out like a four months from now. They were like, you know, there's going to be a glorious array of issues and you're going to tell us about them and we're going to fix them. And I'm like, dude, half the people who are giving you feedback, you're giving it to a week, a week later and you yeah. have two weeks from there to implement their feedback. So yeah. historically, PlayStation, Bethesda Game Studios, still to this point, awful, awful relationship, never really works out. I'm looking at you, Skyrim. I'm looking at you, Fallout 3. And now, <laughs> you know, that what? let's say something goes wrong with Fallout 76 on PlayStation 4. I think actually Fallout 4 is DLC. You know, and, and um, let's say now there's something wrong there. But that's just got two weeks to fix it. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, a very short amount of time. Their defense is like, oh, well, we're all going through Bethesda Net. So if you're on console, if you're on PC, you got to go through Bethesda Net. 
And they're like, oh, if we're going through Bethesda Net, then we can patch the game a little bit quicker. And so we'll see. We'll see if that happens because I think that's going to be the main test. It's not even going to be initially like what content's coming, how good is this game. There's going to be a big problem or something notably yeah. wrong where... You are wor- you mean you're worried more about the stability of the servers? No, because I feel like, dude, with any of these online games, servers are, are shit right away. Yeah, right. They're, I'm just talking like maybe an imbalanced weapon, a, a exploit, something oh, that's really messing up the game and like how quickly Bethesda gets on and says like, boom, done. Like if they stomp out an issue within a couple of days that, that really is messing up the game, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll, we'll see, I guess. Um, keeping with Fallout 76, we've also got ourselves... The crossplay debacle, which continues onwards. So Sony announced the other day that uh, they will be allowing crossplay, cross progression with Fortnite. So Fortnite is that big that they've managed to bend even Sony to their will. I interesting couple of weeks for Sony when you look at how they've responded. You know, they they responded to backwards compatibility. They responded to crossplay. Um, and it, it's weird. You wonder why. Like, do they know something that's coming from Microsoft later on where they need to start cleaning up their image now? Because, uh, you know, I had said it for a while. I'm not, like, crazy about crossplay. I get why people value it. But personally, for right. me, it's not the biggest deal. But um, I always said it was egg on the face of Sony. They just look kind of foolish not doing it. So they're finally doing it. Um, what did you just, before we get into the Fallout 76 aspect of it, what did you feel about, you know, Sony responding to issues instead of saying like, bitch, we're number one, stomping, you know, standing on their mountain and then all of a sudden like coming off the pedestal and trying to clean things up? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to know if it's a politician's apology where it's like, I'm going to say sorry. And then we're just going to move on. Mm -hmm. And because remember, you can say you're working on something and work on it for six years. So they can say, oh yeah, we're working on this kind of stuff and it'll never happen. Remember that Epic is also the company that decided to say fuck Google and its Android store for for Fortnite. They were just True. like, we'll just do our own thing. And they got away with it. And they, in, in fact, sold incredibly well. So they're, of all the companies out there, I mean, who knows? It might have been a, a thing where they just said, okay, we're, this, this game is not going to be on your system at all anymore. Or we're going to do this or we're going to do that. And I don't know if Sony, I, I don't really think Sony's, Sony's responded, but they've responded in the only way that's really possible other than words, which is to, uh, you know, sort of fix up some of the little things that they have. Yeah, like PSN. Leaks. Yeah, but I mean, like PSN versus Game Pass. Well, the, the architecture is different. So it's like, well, we'll allow this, but only for these games, like Spawn Wave and you and I were talking about, where it was like only some, ver- you know, games can be downloaded, right. that kind of stuff. I I would assume also that Sony's not completely asinine and realizes that one of the worst things out there is a hungry Microsoft because they have unlimited coffers and they have just un- insane money. So they've been talking about buying even more studios and letting those studios run completely on their own and make you know whatever game, but they'll make it under the Microsoft umbrella as an exclusive. It doesn't take a crazy person to look at that as, a, as if you're a CEO of another company to go, uh, we got to make sure we're making some headway here because right. Sony has Sony came through in the PS3 era at the very end, mm-hmm. but that was more along the lines because Microsoft was moving on, and so it was like it, 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 Sony's Sony's had at least one time where they weren't doing the best. So I think they know they're like it's possible, and Microsoft is long run. They're like, oh okay, Xbox One, Xbox X, Xbox. XXL, whatever the fuck they're going to call it. <laughs> um, they've already admitted, like, PS5 has stated they're going to, that they stated, like, the PS5 is, an, is a whole new platform, even though I think you and I both agree it'll be backwards compatible. Yeah. Xbox is like, oh, no, your PC, your Xbox all work together. So they're both sort of going about it the same, the, the same way. They're just sort of also just naming things different. So, I mean, it's it, a lot of it's pol- politicians speak. It, it kind of is now that you mentioned it. When you it. listen to it. Yeah, I, I got to say, though, you know, a lot of people like to pick their allegiance. But, ladies and gentlemen, can we just talk for a second about how freaking good this is for the industry that these yeah. three titans are all fighting for their lives, even though they're doing insanely well. You know, yeah. that's that's great news for everybody that even Sony, which I'll admit I was shocked. I mean, I love their exclusives. 
I like a lot about Sony, but I also have my share of complaints about them, like with Microsoft and Nintendo. Um, yeah. And I'm I'm very shocked that they actually rebounded a little bit here. And like the the crossplay speaks a little bit more to fixing an issue. I feel like um, the the backwards compatibility was like like you said, it was like patchwork almost. Like it was like right. we'll allow this, but we can't do this. It's not fully there yet, but like you said, they started making headway. Um, but now Fallout 76 was one of those games that Todd Howard had said, well, Sony's not being super helpful right now. And so people were, were pointing the finger at Sony at the time about crossplay. It was, it was Fortnite. It was Fallout. It was, I think, Rocket League. You know, it was just endless with them. And so when this crossplay announcement happened, Pete Hines applauded Sony. And then a lot of people were like, well, all right, yeah, Fallout 76 is going to happen because they were just saying how Sony wasn't being helpful. Turns out Fallout 76 is still not going to do crossplay sure, for PS4. Right. Uh, P9 says, folks, chill. I work with a lot of game devs and, or I work with a lot of devs and games for whom this is important going forward. Fallout 76 does not support crossplay for a number of reasons. I have no idea if it ever will, but I assure you it is not on our radar right now as we focus on beta and launch. Now, this comes from uh, Imran Khan via Game Informer. I swear, this guy's on our podcast every week. Can we get this man as guest? We use his work all the time. Um, he says, Heinz clarified that he's not saying it's impossible, just that it's not a focus with the game so close to launch. He's also He also isn't saying Sony is blocking Bethesda from doing it at all, just that Fallout 76 won't have it right now. Now, I had heard that Bethesda had a system in place. They presented it to Sony. Sony had rejected it during this whole issue. So Bethesda had scrapped crossplay and moved on to other shit. And now with crossplay opening up, people have said that Bethesda was trying to, you know, gather some good PR during right. that time and be like, oh, fuck Sony, it's them, use them as the scapegoat. And now when push comes to shove, hey, you can get crossplay in, they're not doing it. So with all that data out there, where do you think Bethesda's really standing on this? Do you think this is a little bit of a, a PR thing kind of gone wrong? Like they're like, oh, fuck, Sony actually, <laughs> they actually did it or... Where, where are you well, thinking? I, th I, th I think the difficulty is explaining game development to like gamers who just want to bitch about everything. But like Pete saying, listen, it's not supporting it. What they probably did at some point is they did exactly what you said. Sony kept saying no, and they're like, fuck it. We're done then. We're done worrying about it for this game. That's the way, that's the way it is. I mean, the, mm -hmm. they have a particular amount of resources. The testing for multiple configurations, the testing for complete two different networks touching each other takes far more than just something that Pete Hines of all people can snap his finger at. I did see yeah. some of those. Uh, they were the worst parts of Twitter. Like that's the kind of that's the, those are the parts of Twitter where you just you you don't you don't want to admit that they're in the same industry because they're so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. um, I would assume 76 for the longest period of time will probably not be cross play and Bethesda will you know whatever in the future Bethesda will look at it but I also would not be surprised if Sony has a um, crossplay tax of some kind. Really? On develop. That's not, I never yeah. thought of that. Well, Switch has a tax, technically. VR has a tax. Techni they're called VR tax or Switch tax, but it's like, how much does the media cost? How much does it cost to work with us? I would not doubt if Sony's like, I wouldn't, I'm just any company is like, well, if you want us to do this, then, you know, we have to support it with our infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to be our name on the line. So we mm -hmm. want this. You right, know, it right. just, it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me. Yeah. I, like I said, you know, I, I kind of stand in the, in the area of like, in the scheme of a lot of issues that circle the games industry, I get why crossplay is a problem. I don't uh, yeah. deny people of wanting it or why they want it. I just, it, it doesn't as for me personally, I don't view it as the worst thing in the world. I had discussed it, I think, one time on my channel, just when it initially had happened. Um, but, you know, now now that it's all out there, like, I'm not saying either company at this point is necessarily wrong. I think it was just very much a, a lot. It's, it's like with anything, man, when, you know, when it comes to games. So much happens behind the scenes that we just mm -hmm. don't see. And I, I think it very much boils down to just, okay, there was a discussion. There was a system presented 
you know, they're, Bethesda's not going to sit with their hands folded and wait for Sony. Exactly. They, they got exactly. clearly, you know, with everyone expressing worries, they got way more shit to worry about with this beta and making sure the game works than a system that at the time Sony had said it's completely impossible for them to do and that they don't yeah. see reason for them to do. So, I, you know, I just I feel like Sony eventually caved. Finally, I don't I don't know why it took them so long to, especially when they had like recommented four times. You know, what's up with that? You know, they'd they'd stay stayed pat so many times. What do you think caused them to just say like, all right, fuck it, we're doing it? Well, it might have been the reverse. They may have already known they were going to do it, and they wanted to make sure other companies didn't think it was going to be an instant thing for all games. Hmm. So they may have said, okay, we behind the scenes we know that with with these this one or two or three games, we are going to allow it, but we don't want every single developer to want it or ask for it. And so they're like, yeah, we're the best play on our systems and maybe they knew prior because the thing is is these deals aren't just magically made uh-huh. like the same day they're announced so yeah. they were sending those tweets obviously after also let's be honest pr the pr tweet person may not know the same shit that a person internally at, at the company knows right, right. like the, the internally at the company they don't tell their pr stuff or, or P, pr people everything we already know that because we've dealt with pr people who don't know mm-hmm. things you know, so I, I mean, it's, it's a, just a lot of hubbub. Yeah, I, I just think it's a case where like companies spoke too soon and spoke too definitively at that. You know, where but that where Todd Howard's like Sony's not being helpful. You know, just kind of casts a shadow on them, and it's like we, you know, in that time period, enough's happening where it's instantly easily believable, especially with supplemental comments from Sony. Um, you know, I, I just feel like both both sides jumped the gun a little too soon. And to, I view I view crossplay as kind of quality of life stuff. Like you know, it, it's something that it, let's say Bethesda were to you know they got their first couple of expansions out for for Fallout seventy six were a year after launch. They're like, okay, let's squeeze in crossplay now because that's where like conversations happen. I, I don't know if this is really a thing, but you're at the bar with your friend. You got an Xbox. He's got a PS four. You're talking about Fallout seventy six. They announced crossplay. You're like, yeah, I haven't played that game in like a good couple of months. I tested out the recent expansion, yada yada yada. You find out crossplay is a thing, and now you can play with your buddy, who's on Xbox, and and you're on PS4, and like nothing's stopping you from hopping back into that game now. It's not like, yeah. oh, I had a squad on PS4, they dropped the game completely, and I I so I just moved on. You know, I really like the game though. Now you can like squad up with someone else. I feel like that that's just me. I think it's more of a quality of life improvement down the line. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So Fallout 76 crossplay discussions have flared up. I personally plan on making a video on it eventually. I just I want to see if more comments come out on it. Like I said, it seems like there's just too much in the shadows uh, before, you know, I can really give my full opinion on it. But what we can give our opinion on are comics. So a lot of you guys, whenever <laughs> I talk about it on the show, ask me, uh, you know, like I'm some comic expert, which I'm not. I should clarify that. But a lot of you guys ask, you know. Where do I start, Matty? I want to read comics. That's always it, you know, because there's so freaking many. There's a million in one series, and it's it's a hard place to find where to jump in. So when I was doing research for the podcast, I found a little story also on GameInformer.com from, you guessed it, Imran Khan. And um, I thought it would be a perfect time to share with you guys a good place to jump into for comics. So Spider-Man PS4 story continues in the Spider-Getting comic with a brand new villain. And I think a lot of people are going to want to get into this because Spider-Man PS4 is selling like hotcakes. A lot of you out there are beating the story now. And you probably want more. So, Spider-Geddon is a giant comic crossover event of multiple Spider-Men um, that was announced earlier this year with the surprising inclusion of the new universe of Marvel's Spider-Man, the now recently released PlayStation 4 game. The inclusion of the white Spider-Man bakes Spider-Geddon the first and thus far only continuation of the story from the video game. So... Uh, the first issue, appropriately titled Spider Geddon Number Zero, is written by longtime Spider writer Christos Gage, who was on the writing team for the game, which I thought the writing for the game was pretty well done. Mm-hmm. So that's great. Yeah. Um, in an interview with Marvel, Gage describes a somewhat shell shocked Spidey meeting parallel universe versions of the enemies he just faced in the game and dealing with the alternate versions. In addition, this is where I think a lot of you are going to get gripped by this. You're like, whatever, comics. But at this point, I think this might catch your interest. In addition, Gage explained that the five-part comic arc will introduce a new villain to Insomniac's Spider-Verse named Tarantula. There's no new details yet, 
but Gage said that the team helped him create and approve the character for the series. So what you got yourself here is, number one, not a huge investment. Five-part comic arc. You're, you're not diving into anything deep. This is a good place to get a taste of what comics are like. Number two, you got the investment already with the game. You got some backstory. A lot of people, why they struggle with comics is they don't got that backstory. They don't know what happened prior to this. And that happens, that kind of couples in with finding that right starting point where it's like, okay, it's a blank slate. I'm getting the story right. from the beginning here. Uh, so you got that with the game. The, the game is the backdrop here. Um, number two, or number three, sorry, is this this brand new villain. I think that's a really cool inclusion. Um you know, the, the, one of the biggest strengths I felt about Insomniac Spider-Man was that they, they highlighted a, a kind of B-tier villain like um, Mr. Negative. And right, so they to definitely did. Yeah, to create a another villain, um, I don't know shit about Tarantula, I'm not saying he's good, but uh, to create another villain and, and tie it into the aftermath of what was a really good superhero story, I thought a lot of people would be interested in that. Um, if you're looking to get into comics, this I'm just saying, I, it jumped off the page as me. It's like, this is a perfect place to start because I've read, personally, so many posts and forums and so on of, of these comic series and, and orders you got to read them in. And I know, like, some will say, read issue 57 of this series, then issue 96 of this series, and then hop back to this one. And it can get really complicated. So if you're looking for something straightforward, simple, this is a perfect place. Carrick, do you got any comics that... Uh, you jumped out to you as like a perfect beginner place. Um, no, this mm -hmm. would probably be the best one. The reason why is because I didn't even know I had to use a Reddit subreddit called like Reading Order because I was having the issue right. you were having. I was buying comics in a line, and then the story would jump, and I'd be yeah. it'd be like to find out the next thing that happens, and then you'd go to your next episode in that comic, and it was like a week later. And we, they, it was, it was all confusing. Yeah. And so I used a read, a Reddit reading order for Batman New Fifty Two. I'm a big fan of New Fifty Two. I don't like the, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, the rebirth of the new stuff. Okay. Um, and I'm slowly working my way through thousands of comics. But I think this is probably one of the best spots because it allows you, if you played the game, to jump in. If you haven't played the game, it allows you to jump in, and maybe it'll interest you in the game. Mm -hmm. And it's short and contained. And I, I think they'll probably write it in a way that it won't probably harken. It probably will harken back to Spider-Man's past and stuff, but it may not be as exclusive as some comics can feel. Mm -hmm. Some comics, when you're reading them, you'll be like, I need to know a ton of shit. Like, because yeah. of the stuff they're hinting about. I don't think they'll probably do that with these. And so if you want to know how comics work, it's probably a really good place to start. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? That that brings up something I meant to tell you for freaking ever now. Since not really forever, but since we had the uh, spoiler cast with Young, yeah, as we were talking about how, like, you know, one of the greatest strengths and weaknesses of Spider-Man PS4 is that gap in his past. And it yeah. turns out the way they filled that out was there was like a prequel in like a comic book or a, a book in general, and yeah. it, it totally explains Peter's past. Um, I don't know if that makes up for any of the storytelling issues that we kind of. Highlighted. Not in the game. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome, but not yeah. in the game, yeah. Because there's Arkham, something... Batman Arkham comics, too. Right, right, right. Based on the Arkham series. Yeah. And I feel you on the on the reading order thing, because my, my biggest example is I, I read mostly uh, Ninja Turtles and Marvel comics. Um, I, I, I dabble in DC, uh, the Batman Detective series for Rebirth. I really best, like that one. Best, best series ever. Batman, uh, the Detective Comics is the best overall series yeah. of all time it's, on it's, DC. At it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I cannot recommend it enough. And I know you don't like Rebirth, but um, I, I gotta say as I, much as much. As much. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. You don't like Rebirth as much, but uh, I, I think that the the Detective Rebirth is really good. Um, but what I was getting at was in in the TMNT is it universe? Hold on, it's right here. Yeah. All right. Multiverse. Yeah, it's it's TMNT universe, and uh, what it does is it, it's based off the name. It doesn't cover just the Ninja Turtles. It's like the Ninja Turtle universe. So like right. in 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 volumes one and two, they're they're covering you know the Ninja Turtles. Uh, at first, they're in like Baxter Stockman's lab. It's like a really gory battle. It feels mature, and then they hop to a different part of the TMNT universe, start another story thread, and then at the end of the book, it's like Michelangelo by himself doing like some takedown at a warehouse with someone else and it was just like it jumped around and then the next volume they continue some of 
uh, a couple of stories in that first volume, but they leave the one where they were in Baxter Stockman's lab completely alone. And then volume three, there's absolutely no Ninja Turtles. They tell Karai's backstory. They tell, like, they show some of the oh, other, wow. m- you know, mutants that you had met in volume two. And I was sitting there just like, I, I, I still read it because I'm like, you know, I, I feel like eventually I'm going to get it, but... I feel like that's one I need to look up a reading order for because I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. It's so confusing to me. Yeah, reading orders, I mean, like I couldn't even describe how much they helped me because I'm not a comic book fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Richie Rich when it fucking 1990s early, you know, like that was a, a couple comics I've always been put off by the narrative jumps i'm a book reader like a novel reader so mm-hmm. like the detailed narrative was so much easier for me to understand than like comic cell comic cell comic cell comic yeah. cell and jumping and having these gaps but when i got that reading order um website and i, I was like i'm just going to give it a try it it did it did help man like it did it really did allow me i mean i'm not going to say they're the best things in the world but once i understood exactly how comics work cuz i even had brian um edwards who draws for or, or sorry who writes for batman detective comics and he was on the podcast and i was telling him i'm like dude even like it's difficult and he's like it's hard even for me and i work for the company right and even he was like dude it is very difficult cuz we had this long discussion about how to even get into him and he saw you just have to Take for example, <laughs> a, a world event. That's how I got in. I don't have any now, but I usually have New 52 artwork up. I got into New 52 because it was a new event. And I felt like this is a perfect, like, if I'm going to jump into the world, New 52 would probably be mm-hmm. where to do it because it's a world change, uh, which they all have one every every couple years. But, yeah, they're difficult, dude. They're difficult to get into and understand. Once you do, they can be great. But, um I don't, I don't, I don't envy anybody who's like just thinking of getting into comics because it can be fucking, dude, it can be mind boggling. You're just like, I don't know what to do. I know, I know. But anyway, it's just something that I want to put on people's radars in case you're curious about comic books. Uh, I'm definitely going to give it a read. I read a ton of Spider-Man comic books. Those are, by the way, I should highlight really, really easy to follow. Um, I suggest Renew Your Vows. It's kind of like a family story for Spider-Man about like MJ having spider powers and they have a kid who's got spider powers. Really cool. I've suggested it multiple times, but if you're looking for a good place to start with like no backdrop, that's a good one. Start with issue one. Anyway, let's move on to some video games again. Red Dead Redemption 2 will require 105 gigabytes of free space on your hard drive. This information comes from Jordan Serrani of IGN.com. So, the article begins, as I headlined it, Red Dead Redemption 2 will require a massive 105 gigabytes of hard drive space to install on the PlayStation 4. First, st- first spotted by Rockstar Intel, U.S. retailer Target revealed the figure through the image of the PlayStation 4 Pro Red Dead Redemption 2 bundle seen below. While file sizes can vary across platforms, Xbox One owners should expect to clear a similar amount of hard drive space. The image also revealed Red Dead Online will support up to 32 players, putting it slightly above GTA Online's 30-player limit. Meanwhile, select online content will be exclusive to PlayStation 4 for 30 days, according to the box. How do you feel that you got to clear out 100? I mean, I thought I thought Advanced Warfare was ridiculous My yeah mind. remember advanced warfare yeah I that think, was funny i think was that in the 80s I, there was a call of duty game that i think was like 130 or something no, it was like. 120 or 130 for for that game yeah it's funny you mention that but um to me i'm okay with it I, I think i think overall we should probably expect these especially because uh, you have the ps4 and the ps4 pro you don't want different versions so you have to make the ps4 pro version on the same disc if you have changes to specific things assets those will be there Mm -hmm. you know i i I think it all makes sense also you can only compress we found this out with skyrim collector's edition you can only compress audio to a certain point right and and then you're fucked and speaking points for example bard's tale is huge uh as a download the reason why voice they want a good clear voice people do not realize that of all the things out there unless it's an fmv of all the things out there, voice takes the most data and mm-hmm. the most size for for the if you want it to sound good for the um for the period of time. Mm-hmm. And dude, of all the games out there that's probably gonna have a shit ton of story and voice, it's going to be that. 
Absolutely. So, to me, it's not that surprising. Dude, I mean, put it this way. 200 animals were confirmed for this game. 200 or 200 animal species. Okay? Each one of those has to make sounds. Yeah, right. There you go. 200 sounds right there. And, yeah. and that's just little, like, you're running around the world and you hear, like, a, a little squirrel or something like that. It's all it is. And you got footsteps. You got everyone talking in the world. The the unique voice lines for people, people acknowledging you. I mean, I can't stress it enough and what highlighted it for me most was i was testing switch games one time man i was <laughs> listening to the audio and because Xenoblade, saw yeah, too. yeah and and it got so compressed so it sounded yeah. like they were talking like this and yeah. it, it just <laughs> yeah like yeah crackly compressed audio and i gotta tell you it sticks out i i, I know Karagu and i we fucking love audio we, we we pay attention to it very closely maybe not as much as everyone else, but I mean, even if you don't care about the audio, it'll stand out to you, man, with some of these games. Um, I just got Dragon Ball Fighters on the Switch today. It dropped on um, on the Switch, and let me tell you why. Great game, looks great, runs great. I adore this title, but you can just hear a little yeah. downgrade, a yeah. little bit. You know, when when like when Trunks yells. It's instead of like the clear like battle yell, right. it's more li little. I, I'd say crispy. It's like Arr! like you know. Yeah. You hear the grit on it. Dig it oh, you can hear the digital where they're actually like digitally removing anything they can remove to mm -hmm. get that smaller. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You can Xenoblade Saga too, is easily the worst compression I've ever heard in a game. Really? It's, What's that like, dude? It's I'm not lying. They almost need subtitles because when people talk, it'd be like. <laughs> It's 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 way worse than Skyrim Special Edition, which was bad as fuck. Skyrim Special Edition when that first came out. <laughs> yeah, the Switch. Oh my god, dude, the Switch. Oh. Yeah, of course. sorry, yeah. Switch version for anybody Not, wondering. Yeah, yeah. I, dude, holy fuck, that that was one of the first games oh that I tested where god. it stood out. When I was sitting there listening to it, I was like, whoa, okay. And you can hear. Um, I, I'm sure you and I. I only record video game audio at 320. And then I'm, when I'm recording normal gameplay, sometimes it'd be mm. 128. But that's low compared to like a studio sample. Like they're not going with 320 fucking MP3s. I can guarantee you they're going with yeah. a far higher quality, uh, you know, overall system and bit rate than we ever would go to. So that's going to balloon up sizes very quickly. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. When, when you look at audio files just raw, when you export yeah. like your review, even with the stutters and the stammers, you're like, okay, I got a 21 minute recording here. That's already a ton of file sizes without all the edits and, and yep. changes you got to make, noise removal, all that shit. So it just adds up. And, yeah, and sure. when you got to stuff all that in there. I mean, plus the Animal, game, the sound game... effects, music, yeah. music. Sorry, I uh, apologize. No, I was fine. just going to say, music, I bet they don't. Ton. I mean, I bet is insanely high bit rate. And, you know, a five, mm -hmm. I mean, if you d if you look at uncompressed audio, which is FLAC, or I think Wave allows for uncompressed, those can be huge, like 40 megabytes for a four-minute song. That's fucking, that's actually massive when you consider a game's going to have far more tracks than that. You yeah. know, many of them so they can intersperse. And you, know, you, you just you just add that up with the, the voice lines, the animals, yeah. little world sounds. Let's say like you got half a gig of music, probably at base value, you're like, all right, out of 105 gigabytes of space, that's not too bad. But then like it just adds up. And what I was getting at was like, then you look at the game world itself, gigantic. You look at how good it looks too. And all like the it's a Rockstar game, so you already know. Um, even though I, I talked a little bit about Rockstar bias last week, like you already know the game world is going to be very organic, very alive, responsive to you, and that takes up data. I mean, it makes sense why it's so big. I will certainly free up 105 gigabytes of free space for this game, you know, instead of freaking Advanced Warfare. That fucking blew my mind, man. Was it yeah, yeah it was it, 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 yeah no it was it, it okay. or it it, it could have been the infinity or infinite warfare mm. but one of them i remember a call of duty you and i actually having this discussion being like 120 fucking gigabytes yeah. or whatever so yeah there are uh, i mean the textures people always think graphics are what take it but actually especially the way graphics are they allow for compression some games you can see places where they don't have the best texture on purpose, you know, because mm -hmm. they don't think anybody will go there. Spider Man had a couple. Um, yeah. Odyssey. Odyssey certainly has some. So, it, yeah, it's it, audio is where it's going to be. So, any of those big games. And, and I mean, of all the games that I want 
a big download, it's actually Red Dead because that in, that would indicate you do have a ton of audio, and that's what I want. I want yeah. I want to feel like I'm living in a Western world, which means sound effects, music for your organ, music for your fucking shitty piano at the bar, every sound effect for every coyote you can possibly mm-hmm. imagine. I agree. You know, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. What I wonder, and what I'm trying to learn, um, as I I try to develop as both a critic and uh, someone who loves games and, and is intrigued in development is like, we have a, a game, we'll, we'll take Skyrim because we brought it up earlier as an example where, and this is something with Bethesda Game Studios is the way they do file compression where they'll have these enormous worlds, but it'll be like a four gigabyte game. Yeah. And I wonder how they do that versus what Rockstar's doing where they're like, yeah, we're going to cram up you know, if you look at the base PS4 and the base hard drive it comes with, which is 500 gigabytes, and that's before, like, you initially install the firmware and everything, and then all of a sudden you're you're probably at, like, 420. They're like, yeah, we're going to take up, like, a fifth of your hard drive space, maybe a third right there. What What is the difference? What do they do when they wrap up development? Or maybe it's not even wrapping up development. What gets compressed compared between Bethesda Game Studios and and Rockstar like why are why is there such a big difference in game size because there well, are some because... that are just so big sorry like The Witcher 3 no, as well okay. that's that's a huge game tons of dialogue tons of choice and consequence for options that you may never see and I remember that sitting around like 40 gigabytes well color data first of all not to be rude but Fallout games have a particular color palette true true a- Right, and so a Witcher goes from brown to green to blue to red to fucking blah, 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 where a Fallout mm-hmm. may just be sort of these right. muted colors. Those muted colors allow for compression, which is where the the system looks and says the human eye won't be able to see the difference between this brown here and this brown pixel next to it, so I'm going to remove that data, and I'm going to use an algorithm to draw the pixel between by taking the color data from this pixel and this pixel. So it'd be like a black marker and a white marker, and knowing, as long as you know the math, between the steps of colors you need, you can actually get from white to black without the other colors. Mm. And But your compression, how many missing colors you have, is how bad the compression can look. If you just go white to black, it's going to look like shit. But if you have like white, black, a red marker in there, and maybe a blue marker, well then there's more data for the computer to sample. The math works better. Um, And when it comes to space, the easiest way to describe it is if you pretend the texture is a piece of paper and you're measuring your hard drive spaces in your table, what happens with compression is they fold the paper over. Right. And that's pretty much how how it works. All data is duplicated whenever it can be as well. So if you're missing, if you have data for one texture that's identical to this texture, but this one's a little darker, they can actually run math and say, all right, this one will be darker, but we're not going to have another texture that's this one darker. We're literally going to tell the computer to draw this one and apply a shader to appear like this one. And so you save a full, if there's two pieces of paper, you quite literally don't have this piece of paper. You have this piece of paper plus a math calculation to equal this piece of paper. And with Bethesda and browns and grays and dark colors, there's less color data to do. They don't need to worry. And not to be rude, but their texture resolution ain't the best. Yeah. Not, I mean, no, I, I think we would both agree that yeah, like, yeah. sometimes it can get a little rough yeah. at times. So, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Oh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Your video game development lesson of the day right there. Thank you for that. That's super yeah. enlightening. Generic stuff. compression lesson number one. Mm-hmm. Very generic. There you go. All right. Uh, to, you know, kind of conclude some of the discussion here, <clears throat> we just want to talk about what we're playing, what games we're looking forward to. Um you know, just to, uh, you know, we haven't had one of these segments in a while, but with the review season starting to, you know, really enter full swing now, Carrick and I, Carrick's knee deep, you know, he's with Forza, AC, I'm just doing AC, but um, this month's going to be super busy for us. So, you know, I want to hear from you, Mr. Review Man himself. What are you, what are you most keen to play? And um, what are you enjoying now? Just give me one second. I need to flip on a light in the meantime. For sure. You want me to keep talking? Okay, I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to keep talking while he's doing this. Um, so, for me, um, I just decided to keep talking while you were gone. I didn't know All you good. wanted me to. No, you're good. Um, I, I just have to say kudos to Microsoft. Um, Forza Horizon 4 has a higher Metacritic score than Spider-Man. Whether I agree with that or wow. not, I'm still sh- 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 shocked 
and you can bet people at Microsoft are high-fiving each other right now because of their lack of success, at least with reviewers, when it comes to Sea of Thieves' State of Decay. Gotcha. So um, yeah. I'm playing some Forza. We're doing a team ladder in the ACG Discord where, like, everybody's going to race on certain tracks, and the, the fastest I'm going to give away, like, you know, $50 Steam codes and shit. Cool. Um, where I always like to do goofy stuff like that. So I'm, I'm trying to play that as much as possible. Assassin's Creed... Um, you know, I think we can talk about general impressions. We can't give a score, but people streamed it and were talking. You were talking. Yeah. I saw you uh, attack. I watched you kill the sharks. Um, <laughs> you should have seen the Spartan kick I did on someone from the freaking oh, top I of a... Uh, I, was, I was clearing out a camp, and I Spartan kicked this woman. And I'll tell you what. It was like I had a fucking jet engine on my foot when I hit this lady. Because she, <laughs> she... It wasn't like, you know, a little loop. Kind of like right. where it's like a curve drop. Like it's she went straight off, straight <laughs> off the cliff for Unaffected a mile. Unaffected by gravity. <laughs> yeah, completely <laughs> flying. It was, I cracked up on stream. It was insane. I'm definitely going to throw that clip somewhere in my review for those wondering and, and had missed it. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk a little so, AC. So AC, and then um, before we do that, I just want to say Life is Strange 2. I did finish that. Mm. It's scoring very well as well. I don't awesome. like it as much as the originals. But I'm very happy to see an episodic game do well, especially after Telltale yeah. evaporated. Yeah, you know, in... <laughs> that that's a code that dropped in my inbox right as I'm in the middle yeah. of the gargantuan game that is yep. AC Odyssey. And I was like, fuck, I want to review this, but I don't think I can right now. I'm super yeah. busy. Um, but I'm glad to hear that because I have to admit, you know, I, I was very sold on Life is Strange 1, I remember, because I love the idea of the time. And, yep. the, and the choice and consequence. Whereas with Life is Strange 2, I saw the trailer when it was first officially revealed, and I was like, I was sold on the story. I was sold on right. the characters there. Um, so I'm definitely really looking forward to that. Um, I'm probably going to stream that too and just give off my impressions on the on the episode. I almost said episodic. On the episode there. But um, as for AC Odyssey, we can we can generally talk. We can't really go into any specifics whatsoever, and I'm sure we're we're gonna definitely next week have to have a, a whole segment on this yeah. game because there's just a lot to go through. Um, but general, it's the perfect name, right? Yeah, perfect Odyssey, name. perfect name. Because damn, sorry. Yeah, you, you you were asking something. No, no, I was just gonna say you know general impressions, and I think that's a good place to start. Fucking big game. It's yeah, it's huge. I mean, like you and I talked about this openly on the stream and um, or on the podcast. And so all we're doing really is just I would say you showed this in your um, when you were doing your video, you mm -hmm. were showing the map. So we're not hiding or we're not we're not saying anything that'll get us in trouble. But when you look at the map, dude, and you look at the role playing that goes on, you look at the things that you can do. You and I talked prior to the podcast about some completely different choices we made. Yeah. Um. I won't say that people aren't going to get through it much faster than their 100 hours, mm -hmm. you know, number. You should never say a number, by the way. Um, but I can honestly say that it is one of the meatiest games I've ever played that isn't an MMO. <sighs> yeah. Like, it feels like an MMO at times. Not in, like, a grindy way. Just there's so much to do to level up. The way they dole out XP. Like, that, that was the, the first teller to me. Like, I finished the quest, and they gave me 5,000 XP. My bar, like, went up a little bit, and I was like, I just got 5,000 XP. You're telling me there's yeah. there's that much uh -oh. more shit to do? Yeah, I was uh -oh. like, uh, yeah, as a reviewer, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm really yeah. in for it now, even though I'm like, I'm like, oh, they gave it to me early. I'll be fine. Mm. I've had 35 hours one, one 23-hour session all at once, and one 18, and then another one that was, like, 10, and... While I was playing those, I, I will say that unlike Origins, if I was able to stream it, I would have been able to stream the 23 hours without um, being wanting to get up. Like, that is the difference between Origins. And I know you and I, we, we yeah. have the same, we, we like Origins for different reasons and the same reasons, but a couple of our things we don't necessarily 100% overlap on. And... I feel like Odyssey has something that Origins didn't for me personally. Mm -hmm. So, which I can't even put my finger on it. That's going to take a while to even sort yeah. of 
put a finger on, but it's it's it's, ma- it's massive, and I don't want people thinking that word just means it's filled with fluff because it's it's enjoyable. It, There's something yeah. intoxicating, and the thing is that. I remember when I played Origins, first 10 hours, I was like, oh, my God, this is Oh, my God, good. yeah. And yeah. then I got to the 20 hours and the 30 hours. I was like, it's repeating itself a lot. Get a quest, go to a four, take someone out, get a quest, assassinate this guy, come back. Like, same, same, same. And I think it's because th- this conversation system just really it, – it tosses some flavor in. It does. It, it really aids in making it feel like, you know – there is an evolution there. Nothing really overstays its welcome. Yeah, you got your chess. You got your collectibles there for sure. You got your synchronization points. But it's very well placed where on my way to a quest, hit the synchronization point. All right, I can fast travel now. And there's a military camp before there. All right, there's a chest here. One leader to take out. Do that. Pick up my quest. Quest tells me to go interact with someone, finish the quest, come back. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like a gameplay flow where you're always going on to something that, yeah, it's a little familiar, but it's different. It's always different. It's like Spider-Man. Like, yeah, I didn't introduce any brand new formula to the mix, but what you have, have there is something fun. For, for you, did um, did Origins have mercenaries? <sighs> no, no, no way. So no fucking I way didn't, did. Okay, good, good, because I was like, I fucked up then. It, because I was like this feel, I couldn't figure out if it did or not. I think it reminds me of the Nemesis system, but it's um, Nemesis and it's the freaking cops from GTA and Assassin's y- Creed. Yeah, yeah, with the bounty. Yeah. Um, if people don't understand what we're talking about, people have showed it on stream. But there's a mercenary system where, if you do stuff in front of villagers, enough stuff, mercenaries can come for you, and you can find out. It's 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 sort. It's like Nemesis system light. It's certainly not as in-depth, mm-hmm. but what you can do is you can find out like what their weaknesses are, but also what they may drop for you, like a legendary loot or something. And when they show up, if you are not prepared, it's it's a little bit like they took the the dudes from Origins with the horn, the bad guys. The, uh, they'd play the horn. Um, yeah. and they, uh, the Fal- Falneons or something. I can't remember, but it's but these are named guys, and they'll show up with special armor, special weapons and if you are not ready or like i did last night three showed up at the same time i killed a bunch of people not knowing not on purpose i ended up getting in a battle and fucking everybody over that alert went off and then a little bit later i see the horse you know guy on a horse with the red fucking shield over his head and i'm like huh and then behind him were two others and i was like he's not by himself and i went into the you know mercenary systems and there were all these mercenaries i'm like i'm fucked mm-hmm. and uh and i was i got i got i got juggled but i think that adds a lot to it too because once again it's a small con- gameplay conceit but it does make you feel like it does make you feel like you can't nathan drake your entire fucking way through the game and just murder everybody yeah. and then smirk and get away with it it's not perfect but it fits with odyssey i think it does there there's a lot of fundamental changes there that um, I don't know if they'll they'll vibe with everybody, but I I I gotta say, walking away from it, every time I take a breather from it, I'm like, you know, that that's that's different. It's not. Yeah. yeah it, right. it feels like after that break, they finally, you know, even with Origins, like I said, it ha- it, it suffered from it. It had new gameplay systems at times, but it still suffered from some like of the same repetitiveness. So the mm-hmm. same issues, I should say, kept arising with the series. And this one, I feel like it got it. You know, it feels like the AC game that a lot of people are 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 looking for, where it's like, okay, this is different. It, like you said, is it perfect? No. Um, we can get into more of that with our final reviews. But there is a lot of good change here and, and refreshing change. Uh, enough where... 35 hours in and it's like i'm not feeling burnout like i have with every ac game i'm ready for more i want more that type of stuff the one thing that bothered me now i'm okay with it but that first time they and they do not shy away from story elements where you have to make a decision and it's like it's a big decision and the first time a decision came up it had the the sword fight icon Mm -hmm. or maybe it was the finger pointing to say like i'm gonna threaten this person and then it had it had another one, and then it had like ju- uh, judicial, um, the scales. Yeah, I like think persuasion. 
Yeah, and I was like, uh, okay, what the fuck? And then you, I made a decision, and my result was obviously that person wasn't in the world anymore. Like, mm -hmm. I obviously killed him. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I went back, loaded it up, did the other. All the other choices actually completely changed their those elements of the storyline. That person was still alive. So if that continues throughout the whole thing, I think of anything, the one thing people can take away from it is that the impact of choice is actually there, which is nice. Yeah, main story for sure. Yeah. Side yeah. quests, um, when they do Side offer choices. Side quests don't really have a ton, dude. Yeah, when they do offer yeah. choices. Perfect. Like, because I, I, if this didn't happen last night, I'd be right there saying, like, yeah, not as much, but like there was a side quest line that I had played where I went, wow, you know, this went. This could have gone this way or The one that you way. told me about yes. prior to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. that I don't want to specify. It, right. it really, it was like, wow, that was that was good. Like, I was trying to level up, and I found myself just engaged in an interesting storyline on this island. And I was all in on it. And because of my choices, some people died. And at the end, even the person I helped out, because of a choice I made beforehand pissed me off I, she got pissed at me she doesn't like me anymore so i literally lost on all fronts uh it was it was pretty cool and it's like what i like about the and, game is, and i had a completely different mm -hmm. yeah uh, experience. And, and we had talked about the game closing you off versus not closing you off and like that emotionally closed me off it was like all right like this isn't changing like she's pissed at you but yeah, yeah right. like your choices were like some quests are still open even if you make a decision whether yeah. you want to screw someone over or keep them with you you'll still find them like later in the game for that quest line. And so then the, the, the finale is more of like a closing off of like dead helping you or, or something like that, or they're off doing yeah. whatever. Um, they do a good job with when they want to really execute, like this is major, or this is going to be a, a, a heavy choice for the player that they got to stick with. Yeah. Without prefacing yeah, I... it too much though, without being like, here it comes, here it comes. This is gonna be, like, you want to back out now? Like they really just wrap you in this no, situation. No, yeah. They don't. They don't. Pre I, I, that's actually what I was going to point out. I don't feel like they preface it at at all because there's been times where I've been talking and I get to that choice and I'm like, oh fuck, like yeah. And there's no leave option. There's <laughs> yeah. There's no Mass Effect like oh shit, I'm out, I'm yeah. out. You know, and you come back later and you're like, okay, I'm going to punch a reporter now. Here, <laughs> you're you're like choice, 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 and then suddenly you and I had completely completely opposite uh, experiences with this one character, mm. and I remember going like, um. And I knew I should have chosen what you chose without ruining it for anybody. I should have chosen what you chose because ex evidence pointed, evidence pointed to that choice actually being the proper choice. But I wanted to fuck that person because you can have sex in the game. Yes. And I wanted to see what happened. So I chose the other because my character is the male. You chose the female, right? Correct. I, cho I chose Cassandra. And my dude's pretty swarmy acting. I don't know if Cassandra is, but th this guy's swarmy as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and it was so great that you and I had completely different experiences. And then later on, those experiences gel back pretty organically. Mm -hmm. And even in a slightly different way for each one of us, which I think tracks to a lot of development looking at the store RPG you and I have talked, there's not a ton of choices, but I think that might also be because they've tried to make sure that they're, that some of them at least have a, a world changing feel. And especially when the game's so big, you know? Yeah, dude. It's stupid. I mean, they, I think they do a good job of like <laughs> mixing what's new, keeping what's old, and yeah. striking a, a, a solid balance. I, I right now, I'm, I'm feeling good about the game. But um, it's, it's, yeah, I don't want to ruin it. Yeah, it's big though. I mean, Jesus, kitties. Like yes. there's times, like, even prior to the podcast when you and I were talking about the size of the game, and I was like, and I know what you mean. Where when you beat the game of Origins, it didn't necessarily mean you had explored all the world. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally valid. But then when I started looking and thinking about that, I was like, holy fuck! Even if that is true, just by going by what level I am right now. And how long it'll take to get to the level to even beat the game? Yeah, I don't even know what level you got to be to end the game, let alone the end game areas, which I think the cap's 50. And looking at those and being like, wow, that's like half the map. <laughs> and I still... Yeah, it's yeah a, dude. And what I, what I got to say is the game 
levels up with you. One of Origin's big mistakes was like beginner areas, you'd have to just drop off because you'd have a level 5 quest and you'd be level 30 and the quest would still be level 5. But in this game, when you're level 30, the beginner area will level up to like 28. So you'll finish that old quest that you missed and still get like 9,000 XP, which can The help. XP that matters, yeah. yeah. The XP that, that yeah. points out. But the enemies scale mm -hmm. as well in those yes. encounters, if that I too. remember right. Yes, they do. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's looking good. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff, man. There's a lot. It, it, it's inter It'll be interesting to see if people think um, it's an Origins, what was the term, reskin or not. Mm, yeah. You know, because that came up. You know, I think at face value, that. when you look at the combat, you look at you crawling around forts, people are going to think so. But when you really interact with the game and go for that moment to moment action, which is where I, I think the, the game really thrives of like, now I'm going to explore this cave. Now I'm going to do this base. Now I'm going to yep. do this quest. Then I'm going to do the main story. Like that moment to moment stuff is really where people are going to be like, this is different. Especially also, when you're in the conversation system. That that feels, if you play it like, you know, everyone loves the harken back to AC2, which I love it. Don't get me wrong. But like everyone yeah. loves to go back to it. When you look at that game, you, you, and then you look at Odyssey, you're like, wow, you know, they, they really came far with this. Yeah. Um, there, yeah. <laughs> Without, I, yeah, I don't want to say much more. There's, um, it, it, to me, when you look at like the other Assassin's Creed games, not only, I mean, I was actually, that's so funny you mentioned it, but I was actually playing yesterday and going, I remember when Jade Raymond came out on the E3 stage and showed the original Assassin's Creed game and like launched off of a fucking tower into some bushes and you yeah. were just like, oh shit. And now what it's gone to is like, it, it, it's, it's crazy. Also, the I gotta say the verticality in this game is way higher than Origins. So, so high that more... they decide to remove fall damage after a certain point in the game, so you can just nose dive off cliffs without the swan mm. dive and. Oh, fine. I haven't got there. So oh. I um, or is it a skill that you buy? It's a skill that automatically unlocks. So and they don't tell you. So like I think once you hit oh, twenty five, oh I may have it then. Yeah, once oh, you hit, then I think twenty five, you have, have no fall damage. You can just jump off cliffs and. Cassandra Alexios just opens up their I, I, arms, hits dude, the ground, I'm, rolls. Oh, and rolls. Yeah, yeah. Does the does the animation roll? No, yeah. I'm still like climbing th down things, and the verticality. Like you'll come into a valley, and it fucking goes way down, and then you'll have a huge mountain on your left and right, and it, it's something mm -hmm. that Origins, because of its location, wasn't able to do as easily. Mm -hmm. so. It's wild, man. I'd I'd love to see a zoom out of that whole game world you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah because you can't studio, in the game yeah and, and yeah. just look at the map you know like you know, of course like the because i remember one time i fell under the map in, in uh the evil within two and i fell so deep under the map that i could look up and i saw like the little box that right this right. whole game world was created in and like where everything was stored and yeah. i want to see that with with ac odyssey yeah just for sure how big it is i mean yeah. i'd love to see a fly through of that but um you playing anything else or looking forward to anything um, else i'm looking forward to ashen but that one's so they they really microsoft or not microsoft but aurora 44 has been pretty quiet on it um mm. there was a game one of my friends on the podcast was talking about an indie game called occupation which is like bioshock slash um thief slash something else and it's uh, about a world war ii prisoner but you have like a seven hour game but then each time you play it completely different things wow. occur and change i'm, I'm sort of into those that yeah i'm sort of into those totally like, competitive ones. is it out or uh no it comes out i think he said the uh let's see looking at my oh my calendar didn't move i think it's like the tuesday after next if i remember i'm gonna right. just look it up real quick Whoa. yeah the occupation and it looked I mean, it looked interesting. Silver, who's the guy who likes it, likes those kind of cyclic games. He's he's he also likes an origin style game, but he he's definitely more into those cyclic returning back and weird. You know, things have changed and different decisions are being made. So, um, but when he mentioned it and I looked at it, I was like, oh, that actually that actually looks interesting. There's another game occupation. coming out this year that I don't know if I have time to play, but I'm curious about. It's called Cthulhu. Oh, dude, I'm. I'm fuck. I, I call them once a fucking month or once a week. I email them. Sorry, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I want on that one and Sinking City, both of those. See, because for me, on my review schedule right now is probably well, Call of got... Duty, but then I definitely, oh, yeah. I'm definitely doing Soul Cal 
and I'm definitely yeah, doing me too. Heroes yeah, so One bad. Justice because my man Deku, he's going up against Red Dead. Someone's got to support this man, and I, it's like it's got to be me. <laughs> I'm gonna there do you go. it. Yeah, you because know, um, I, I just Red Dead. I just, I want to review Red Dead, but I I mm, I don't know what it is. I just I, part of it's like I don't think I'm gonna get a copy from Rockstar, so it's like yeah, why don't either. I just divert my attention somewhere else? Like. A street copy for that game is probably going to be like fucking four hundred thousand dollars. Oh yeah. no, it'll be. I bet you, dude. A I grand, bet you it'll you be think? more than that. Yeah, oh. I think it'll be a grand. I think that it'll be a grand, and I think that they are going to somehow, because they're rock star, control the uh, early copies to an oh, insane dude, amount. I'm telling you, because they're afraid of leaks. Press only, IGN, Gamespot. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I think too. I've even informed them. I'm like, just so you know, I'll sign. You know, any NDAs, blah, blah, blah. But uh, the, for whatever reason, their idea of press is just like, oh, that they magically won't leak stuff. I don't know why. Yeah, man. So for me, that's why, like, I want to review Call of Cthulhu. Like, that game, I yeah. got to look into the occupation because that's another one that's like, whoa, that's that's got my attention. But then there's the Fallout beta. <sighs> so much, you know. So, Ashen, so to me, is by far the highest. I just, I mean... Derek said it was for sure this this year, but like the Zelda slash cell shaded style, it just it looked it looks like so much fun. Dark Souls Zelda. Yeah, and I, I feel like ever since we met, we've been talking about Ashen. So like we this have, is, we have. Gonna be, it was yeah. my first video, dude. So <laughs> for for or my first interview ever was Derek. Wow. So yeah, yeah, three and a half, four years ago. So you're you're absolutely right. That's, it has that's gonna been be that so long. funny. I I want it, you to film your be? reaction when that key drops in your inbox, and they're like, "Yeah, here's your Ashen review code." I'm just like, yes, dude. It's so weird, Maddie. I had him on the channel, and I was like, he started talking about the game, and I'm like, "Oh, that's different than blah blah blah." And he's like, "Holy shit, you have a good memory." He's like, "That was three years. We changed that like three <laughs> years ago." And I'm like, "Darn it, you know." But he was like, a, he was it gave a really good idea of what development's like, like what can change because mm -hmm. there were some huge elements that have changed since when I first talked to him three and a half, four years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah occupation, man. that, I'm trying to think. Um, well, and Life is Strange, I don't know when the next episode's going to come of that. Hopefully they don't do multiple months. We need to, if you're going to do an episodic game, you need to do it like every two fucking weeks. I don't want to have to go back. this time of the year, and, people are going to play oh, episode one. All right, sweet, and episode two drops what yeah you know? exactly you need to keep it in people's eye you know in people's focus yeah absolutely um but yeah that's those are the types of games i'm looking forward to as for what i'm playing right now obviously ac we went on that but uh for me it's like i'm gonna have ac done before i leave for my fallout event and i'm like i need a game to travel with so of course i had dragon ball on my switch because i'm obsessed with dragon ball fighters that's easily gonna be in like my i'd say top five game of the year um, oh no shit yeah i i i have had a emotional roller coaster with that game but at the end of the day i have to say i i adore what it is i think it's a good fighter and i'm more sold on uh art style and i think that's evident yeah. because like when i talk about even like assassin's creed it had you know we can that's the type of game you, you know i'd say you talk more about polygons you talk more about textures te draw distance technical elements, yeah yeah but I'll still hit on color a ton because yep. that just pops to me more. Um, yep. And so, like, Dragon Ball Fighters, considering it's literally the fucking anime in a game, it just feeds off of that part of me. So it, it, it's always calling my name. I've put, like, easily over 100 hours into it, and it, it's just all oh, wow. online fighting. Yeah, and I, I beat the story, which I actually thought was, like, it wasn't, like, I wouldn't say a good story, but it was, it was probably the best rendition of a story from uh arc system mm -hmm. but anyway i'm getting off track i'm playing that and i'm gonna play cosmic star heroin which is just like a short little indie rpg um i really have been enjoying that i started i'm about like five hours into that on my vita vita lives ladies and gentlemen <laughs> um but yeah that's that's kind of what i've been just tapping through you know no, nothing like huge commitments because with at this time of the year we the games we're playing are what we're reviewing you know yeah yeah it's it is going to be odd though whether you and i get review copies or not of uh of red dead once red dead's done it's going to be insanely interesting to see how the rest of this year not january february of next year which we know are packed but like the rest of this year sort of 
comes like how how the games come out what games people really want like somebody like yourself or me to cover versus what games mm-hmm. are just going to be thrown to the wolves because dude there's going to be some games that i honestly feel will be like the old rise of the tomb raider where no one knows it came out like i i don't yeah. know why i just feel like that's what we're going to have like you and i like getting this next podcast and i'll be like i'm playing blah 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 and you're like that's out you know mm-hmm. it just it, I'm a little nervous about that because I think Red Dead has uh, attained such a high focus from everybody that it's yeah. hard to talk about other stuff. And when we talk about the short lifespans for games, and obviously Red Dead yeah. will have a longer lifespan because it goes, you know, d- because of that delay to Red Dead Online, it kind of extends the life of it. Yep. But there is still that like major game release, and it's like that's where Fallout kind of lands, where. You know, will that be the next game to kind of carry the torch and, and take some of the media cycle? Because we already know with like the events I'm going to and, and, and so many other creators and streamers, like there's going to be a lot of content about this game. It's going to be taking over sub boxes, taking over. Of course, like I said, it's not going to take anything from Red Dead, but it's definitely going to be with the beta with with influencer presence. It's definitely going to be stealing some of the show. Not stealing some of the show. No, I should, that's too much credit. It's definitely going to be gaining attention, though. It's going to be yeah. in people's minds where when it gets, you know, to the point of release date, I think some people might, like, impulse cop it. You know, just be like, all right, I'm going to get it. New Fallout game. I've seen enough on it. I know enough about it. I played the beta. I tested it out. Boom. So, we'll see. I don't know. I, like, I also wonder if that, if... So, I think... It will garner attention, but I think right now the reason why it's garnering attention is because it's a mess. Uh, news oh, yeah, it's not it's for a, a good mess. reason. Yeah, it's yeah. not good for a, so, not good reason. So, like, Red Dead, people are like, there's 200 animals, and people are like, the fuck, that's a fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> and, and Forza 4 and Spider-Man and all these big games that are doing insanely well. And Fallout is, the, you know, to take an old saying, the red-headed stepchild. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like showing up and at the family reunion and no one wants it. Yeah. I mean, not no one wants it. It's just that no one even knows what it's about right now. Yeah. That's until you guys go to the event. Yeah, exactly. Like it literally rests on people like mine's shoulders. It does. It literally it does. does. Like this game lives and dies by us, I feel. So. And your react. Oh, no, I think it not only lives and dies on your on you guys, but your if 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 you guys do not come out of this with an insanely high degree of hype Mm -hmm. that feels real and is backed up by real facts and videos i think that a red dead is what's just going to eat up a lot of those people will be like red dead online's coming out i'll just do that online and or forza's online so i'll just do that online and then the dlc for spider-man i'll just do dlc for spider-man like there's that's the one thing i think could happen with with fallout 76 that i worry about yeah i mean that's the thing is like people are people always assume like oh you cover fallout a lot you must be excited it's like i always tell people it's i'm not excited i'm curious yeah for sure curious you know they did a good job i'm I'm very hmm will this be good if it if it ends up being great that that'll be like the best freaking surprise ever as a fucking huge fallout fan i would yeah love nothing more but i i've you know that's where your fanship clouds the judgment a little bit you're like okay i've been any other game other than Fallout, if I had this little info, I'd be like, it's going to fucking suck. You know? Yeah. So, so that's why I'm not holding my breath. You know, I'm just hoping that because Bethesda Game Studios has made some of my favorite games ever, that they kind of pull out of this one, the victors. Because there have been times, like, Doom is another Bethesda game, nonetheless, where review copy scandals, uh, you know, pre-release discussion. I was like, all right, yeah, it's Doom. Um aside from the initial reveal of it. And then when it comes out, it's like, this is one of the best, if not the best shooter, single player campaign to drop in insanely long. So, you know, it's not like Bethesda hasn't surprised us before in that regard. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man. I mean, that's the thing too, is I'm going on a tangent now, but like with Fallout 76, have you ever noticed, like when we get into a conversation about it, it's never about the game itself. It's about like, how it lives and dies and and, and what little we know about and, and kind yeah. of spinning our wheels on that. Yeah. It's so funny to me. Yeah, it's such a... I, I mean, I, I'm pretty vocal about not caring about it. Um, yes. But I mean, if people, if people come back from events with some actual valid information, then that'll, that'll be cool. I, I, I think in six months from now, what'll be more interesting is to see where it is and if like 
if it is front loaded because of the demo, you know, is that how it was That'd done? Is it, you know, how, how does it fully work? Is it like ESO where it comes out and I know a lot of people didn't love it. I had no problem with it at the starting, but it's a 10 times better game now. And will people stick fucking percent? Yeah. And it's will dude, people... the Somerset Isle, not to cut you off, but that, that DLC, no, which was amazing. I already saw it on sale for the game and half price on the fucking expansion. It's like 30 bucks for Somerset. I'm like, what? How? Yeah. And then, and then you have to, also you know wonder how many um games from that studio in particular are we going to accept that aren't like ready up front mm -hmm. how many games as a whole same thing with red dead if that game comes out and it's missing stuff it feels incomplete how many times are consumers gonna like continue to buy it until finally we get some weird pushback where it's like right you know boycotts or some crazy shit out in the street yeah We'll see, man. I mean, this this month is going to be so busy for us that it, it's going to fly by. And before we know it, we're playing the beta. You know, I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, I, I yeah. never even got to ask you, uh, did you did you plan on playing the beta? Yes, I bought the um, I bought Xbox version. So okay. I'll play yeah. It. I'll yeah. play it just because I'm I have no clue what I'm playing like none. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'll, I'll jump in there. I'm going to review Soul Calibur like you. Because those are, oh, you know, a, a, yeah, those are um, sort of a fun aside, and I want to support fighters as well, it, especially unique fighters like a Soul Calibur that doesn't come around. Yeah, well. man. I mean, I think Namco Bandai has been owning the fighting scene. I know it's kind of contradictory to what I just said, how much I love Arc System, but as I alluded to, it's less of the fighting, which is explosive, and more of the art style. But I mean, I, yeah. I feel like Bandai has made Tekken was one of my game of the years last year. I uh, I thought that was a excellent fighting game to the frame wonderful fighting game soul caliber looks to be kind of more of that um i i really like those fighting games which are less of like combo strings that are 40 freaking hits long and more about like an actual fight where it's like one two three and you kind of hop back and like it's yeah. like you're you're combating your foe in a, in a more believable manner um it's just it's awesome man yeah for sure i'm definitely stoked for that yeah Anyway, that's that's all we've got this week, my friend. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you got this deep into the podcasts, hit us with the hashtag curious. Curious. Oh, by the way, man, we got so many people sending us hashtags last week saying the last Jedi was decent. <laughs> so oh. many fucking people this time. Bad people. I feel like Bad we people. just got to pick con controversial ca uh, hashtags from now on because yeah. holy shit, I was shocked how many people came and they're like. Didn't see it, but, or I saw it. Yeah, I didn't think it was that bad. I was like, wow. I, I'm usually on, like, the other side of the fence where people are like, Carrick's right! Fuck Matt! And yeah. That was I one was, I actually was won. <laughs> Very much so, it sounds like. Anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed episode 172 of the Ham Radio Podcast, and we will catch you next week. Peace, Peace out. out.